Hi everybody and welcome back to my channel. Today I am going to cover a very important topic which is how to talk to your mother-in-law and your father-in-law. Today's video is going to be made up of three parts. The first is what to expect at the door when you're visiting and what to expect during meals and what to expect during goodbyes. So right now I want you to imagine this situation with me. You go with your husband or soon-to-be husband and visit your in-law's house. You're knocking at the door and your mother-in-law opens the door. What is she going to say? I'm going to give you some possibilities and what you can say in response to that. I made up a whole list of what you can expect. So let's see. So I would say 95% out of the time, the mother-in-law is going to open the door because the dad or the father-in-law never opens the door. For some reason, they just don't like to open the door. Anyway, let's get back to the topic. When you knock on the door and she opens up the door, she's going to say a bunch of things. One of them is, Ahlan wa sahlan. Ahlan wa sahlan means welcome, but if you translate literally, it means family. Ahlan wa sahlan it could be and easy. So we are easily family. So basically she's saying welcome. And the things that she would say to you, the names she would call you, one of them would be Ya Habibti. We always say Ya before any titles. So Ahlan wa sahlan Ya Habibti. And this means welcome my love. Speaking to you, to the female. And then she would say something like Nawarti ilbit. No warti literally means you lit up, okay, to give light. You lit up il bit the house. No warti il bit. Ahlan wa sahlan ya habibti. No warti il bit. So what do you say in a situation like this? When your in-law tells you no warti il bit, you lit up the house, you would say in response the nurik, the nurik, and this means this is your light. Okay, so the house is lit up because of you, the person who lives in the house. And this is a very polite response to that. And um, I get this question all the time. What do I address my mother-in-law? Okay, there is a bunch of ways you can do that. I recommend that you ask her directly, what would you like me to call you? Okay, and uh, she would tell you, you can say mama, you can say tant. Okay, tant is the word we say for any auntie. Okay, so for example, your uncle's wife, you say tant. A, a stranger that you don't really know, she's an older woman, you can say tant. Okay, so you can call your mother-in-law tant. So when she says, This is your light. And then, of course, she would tell you to please come in. She would say, it faddali. It faddali means please come in. Here you go. If she's offering you food, take a seat. All of those courteous things, we say, it faddal, it faddali. Okay, but since, since she's speaking to you, a female, I say, it faddali. I'm addressing females right now because I think most of the foreigners learning Egyptian Arabic are women married to Egyptian men. The other, the other way around is the lower percentage, but of course you can learn still from this video. Okay, now that you are inside the house and you are sat down, uh, some of the things that she can say to you is, <laughs> And this means, from the time I have seen you, my heart has opened up for you. Of course, I'm assuming that your mother-in-law likes you. <laughs> okay. So, ana min sa'at min sa'at from the hour or the time. Min sa'at ma shuftik from the time I saw you. Albi my heart in sharah lik has opened up for you. Um, of course, the easiest thing to say to that is wana kaman and me too. That's the easiest thing you can say to that. When I come in, if you are uh, at a good level, mid, medium, or advanced, you can say, When I come in, I'll be in sharahlik. So it's basically saying the same sentence. But you say, When I come in, in the beginning. 
So a bunch of other questions. The most typical question would be, she's, the mother-in-law is going to ask you, how is her son doing with you? Is he treating you well? Is he doing everything he's supposed to? And all that stuff. So she's going to say, Akhbarik A. Akhbarik A means what is your news? And how is he doing with you? Let's assume his name is Muhammad or Ahmed, which is the most common name in Egypt, I think. She would ask you, Akhbar Ahmed or Muhammad, Ma'aki A. Akhbar Ahmed Ma'aki A. How is Ahmed doing with you? Okay. <laughs> of course, you can be extra nice and say there is nobody like him in this world, something that would make her happy and it would make everybody laugh. You can say, Wallahi ya tante ma fish had de zayu fi dunya. Like, I swear there is nobody like him in the world. Ma fish, there isn't. Had somebody zayu like him fi il dunya in the world. Ma fish had de zayu fi dunya. And then he treats me in the best way. Bi'amilni ahsan mu'amla. Bi'amilni treats me ahsan, the best mu'amla, the best treatment. He treats me in the best treatment. Ana mabsuta awi. I am very happy. So this is a long answer. You can choose any part of the, any part, and you can just say it. And then, of course, once you say that about her son, she's also going to brag a little bit about her son and say that her son is the best son in the world and that there is no one else like him. So she's going to say something like, Ah, ibni tayyib, wa ma fish had zayyu taban. Yes, my son is kind, and there is nobody like him. Good, now after greetings and flattering each other, she's going to prepare the food and is going to ask you to please take a seat at the dinner table. What she's going to say to you is, Itfaddali il akli gahiz, itfaddali, please, uh, go. Il akli gahiz, the food is ready. Il akli is the food, and gahiz means ready. So, what are you supposed to say at the dinner table? So, whenever the mother in law or any Egyptian mother prepares food, she always prepares a huge table with lots of different kinds of food and stuff like that. They always do that when someone's coming. So, for example, she can have three or four different types of food on the table, and then they would always say, Ah, oh, I didn't do enough food, I didn't make much, it's not that much. You know, because they always try not to uh, compliment themselves. So anyway, she would say, أنا عملت حاجة بسيطة كده يا رب تعجبك أنا عملت حاجة بسيطة كده يا رب تعجبك I did something simple like this. I wish to God that you like it. أنا عملت, I made, حاجة بسيطة, something simple. يا رب, يا رب is when we are asking God for something. يا رب, because رب means God. يا رب, تعجبك, I hope to God. تعجبك, you like it. And then of course you have to say, no, this is so much, it looks amazing and all that stuff. So what would you say? والله دا كتير يا طنط. ربنا يخليكي. I swear, دا كتير, this is a lot, يا طنط. Yatant, we agreed. It's the name that you will call her. Rabbina yikhaliki. May God keep you. Meaning to keep you safe. And then you take a bite. You taste the food. Of course, you have to say something then. What are you going to say? Of course, you're going to say, Mmm, il-akl gameel. Uh, by the way, don't say il-akl kwayis. Kwayis means good. Yeah. But if you say kwayis, if you just say kwayis, this means, ah, it's good. Like, it's a very n average term. You're going to have to use stronger adjectives, okay? So, The food is very beautiful. You can end all of your sentences with يطنت. And then a phrase that we always say is تسلم إيدك. تسلم إيدك. May your hands be safe. Why did I say that? Because her hands made the food. And you want to say and ask God to keep her hands safe. Tislam idik. And then she is going to say to you, Shukran ya habibti rabbina yikhaliki. The same stuff. Thank you, my love. May God keep you safe. And then you can be even more flattering and complimentary and say, 
You must teach me those recipes. So, what would you say in that case? لازم تعلميني الأكل الجميل ده. لازم must تعلميني to teach me. You must teach me الأكل الجميل ده. This nice food. And then she's going to say yes, of course. حاضر. حاضر is the polite way to say yes when you ask someone for something. حاضر. حاضر يا حبيبتي. هعلمك. I will teach you. And then all you do is smile and eat. And please make sure you finish your plate. Because if you don't, then this is not good. They will. They might think that you didn't like the food. Okay? And uh, try to take your time. Don't finish your plate quickly. Because if you finish it quickly, it's going to be refilled. Okay? So, and then you're going to have to finish it. So take your time. <laughs> Don't finish your plate quickly. I'm trying to help you here because they're going to keep feeding you until you burst. <laughs> now you're done eating. Everything's good. You sat down. You enjoyed yourselves. What do you say during goodbyes? Of course, they are not just going to let you leave. You're going to have to tell them that you're busy. You have to go somewhere. You must do something because if it's up to them, they would make you live with them. Okay? That's what they want. Always. So, if you wanted to leave, you can say, Okay, that's it. It's getting late. We must leave. How do you say that? You can say, خلاص بقى يا طنط. الوقت تأخر. إحنا لازم نمشي. خلاص بقى يا طنط. That's it, auntie. إحنا لازم نمشي. We must leave. الوقت تأخر. The time is late. And then your mother-in-law is going to say, It's still early. She's going to say, ما لسه بدري يا حبيبتي خليكو شوية stay a little or she might even offer that you stay a couple of days <laughs> so خليكو كده يومين مثلا stay a couple of days and then you have to say لا والله ما أقدرش no I can't لا والله ما أقدرش and then she's going to say ماشي يا حبيبتي مع ألف سلامة